In this lesson, we are looking at ecological niche and species interaction. It'll be a two-parter. All right, here is the subject matter we are covering. We are across two different topics again. All right, let's talk about niche first. Now, niche has a huge range of definitions depending on the context, okay? Um, you know, and, and niche is also in ecological terms. It's an organism's specific position or purpose within the group of organisms with which it lives, okay? Ecological niche is how an organism fits into its ecosystem and the way it functions. While a habitat might be, you know, a way to describe its address, an organism's niche is a way to describe its profession or its career. OK, it's the sum total of its interactions and they have to all be taken into consideration so that the, you know, the when, the where, the how, the what, the why of, you know, it eats, sleeps, poops, all of those things need to be considered. So the full range of resources it uses, everything, what it produces, how it does these things. So we like to talk about it in terms of habitat, feeding relationships and the interactions with other species. This is a really complex, layered concept. Now, an ecological niche will obviously depend on all the conditions that are available, okay? And there's a bit of flexibility for some organisms with regard to, say, tolerance ranges, but outside of that range, survival may not be possible. And this may be in relation to sunlight, um, you know, how, how intense the light is, the pH, the salinity of the soil, or the water, or the temperature, or whatever, okay? When we are talking about this niche, once again, it's not just, oh, we're talking about temperature and here are its ranges. This organism needs to live within ranges that works for so many different bits and pieces. So it needs to worry about its biotic and its abiotic, as well as all of its other needs. Now, if two separate species occupy the same niche, so essentially they're practicing the same career, then eventually they will compete until only one of them remains in that exact niche. So it's like saying each town can only have one doctor and one teacher and one lawyer and whatever, okay? The other organism population must make a compromise with regard to some element and element the way that it lives to differentiate itself from that other species. It's called competitive exclusion. Because they are competing against one another, one of those populations will be completely excluded from part of that niche. All right? And we're going to learn a lot more about that later. So two species can actually have an overlapping niche. That's okay. There can be an element where, say, they're both eating insects, whatever it is, but they cannot have the exact same one. So if you look at this, species G has quite a lot of range there, but because species A, B, C, D, E, N, F are all living in that same spot, it can only do so much. So it will only overlap for some parts of the other species, but really its main area where it's living is in those diagonally shaded parts. So once again, no organism can have an identical niche to another species. The example in Pearson is uh, a bunch of bird species that are eating the same insects on a different part of a tree. They're in the same habitat, but the different species have to differentiate to feed at different parts of the tree to avoid competing with one another in that same physical space. So ecology is absolutely riddled with situations where we can discuss it in theory, but the reality is really, really different because it's so complex and there's so many complex layers involved because that's what happens when you live with other populations of organisms. And, and this kind of shows itself with the ecological niche. There's a fundamental niche and a realized niche. Now the fundamental niche is the ideal niche an organism would occupy if given the widest set of potential opportunities to live, right? It's not having to take into consideration how their relationships impact on anything else. So it's like saying there's no competitors, there's no predators, whatever, right? That's one part of it. But the realized niche, that's the actual reality of what's happening. That's the real life situation where it lives, including all of its relationships and interactions with the species around. So it's either talking about, hey, is there no need to compromise, you can do whatever you want, versus I need to compromise, there are other organisms in my space. So when we have a look at a graph like that, the orange species two has, you know, it's a weaker competitor and therefore the it's being outcompeted by species one and it will narrow its niche field in. So there's a really classic example of this that you'll see um, on a rocky shore system and the barnacles need to learn to live with the other species. So if given the opportunity, this species here will just live wherever, right? It's, it's cool. It can live down low, low tide or up in the dry area. But when another competitor comes in and starts to take up its space, then suddenly it gets pushed out of the way and gets outcompeted essentially. 
So the realized niche is much, much more narrow, okay? And the difference between the two, the realized and the fundamental, come from an organism's ability to fully exploit the resources within the habitat, right? If other organisms are restricting it, then it obviously can't. So if two species niches overlap a little and they're competing for the same resource, it may affect the actual distribution of that resource as well. Because when we're talking resources, we're talking probably other organisms that they are eating. So it'd be like if we let you walk into the tuck shop first and we said, choose whatever you want. You don't have to worry about all the other students. That's your fundamental niche. But if you went uh, late because you were running late from class and you were really left with whatever was available because other students had taken it, that's your realized niche. Now, in this image, with the multiple species, that fundamental niche would be the entire G circle, whereas the realized niche would be where there's no overlap. That's what it has to live within, so because it's making all of those compromises.